Hi, welcome to a podcast on gas loss. This is part one of two parts of uh, basic gas loss for first year chemistry and also for the basics for AP. So gas laws deal with gases. How about that? So the basics for gas laws are that there's three different kinds of variables. There's pressure, volume, and temperature. Pressure, we abbreviate with a P. Volume, we abbreviate with a V. And temperature, we abbreviate with a T. Makes sense, right? All right. So you need to understand what these are. What is pressure? Well, pressure is a force applied per unit area. So if I was to have you put your hand underneath these shoes and step on them, you'd feel it. If I was to hit a hammer on a nail, I apply a force over unit area. So what you don't really think about is that there's pressure coming from the atmosphere. Now, this is a bad picture, but I'm going to go ahead and draw. Here's um, oh, we just use blue. That's fine. So here's the land. Here's Death Valley. This is the sea level. And then here's Mount Everest. And this is not to scale, obviously. And then this is outer space. We have a whole atmosphere overhead, don't we? How many atmospheres do we have on this planet? One. And what's it doing? It's pushing down. There's this huge column of air that pushes on the ground. So if this was me standing here, right? I'll give myself some little hair here. What was me pushing on my head? All the way to the um, delineation, the part where our atmosphere ends and outer space begins. There's an air hat. It's a huge hat. That is one atmosphere of pressure that's pushing on me. Now, there's equivalencies. You know that one foot equals 12 inches. Okay? You also know you can measure your height in inches, or you can measure height in the metric system in meters. So these are just different measurement tools. One atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. Right, I'll go into what those mean in a second, but there's your 760 millimeters of mercury. It's also equal to 760 Tor, because the gentleman who was working with millimeters of mercury was named Torricelli, and he's Italian. So in Italy, they call it Tor. There's also KPA, Kilo Pascals. Pascal is a Pascal triangle dude from math that you may or may not have heard about or remember. And so I grew up in California. And radio stations begin with K out there, KFRC, out here they begin with W. So I think of this as a bad radio station, 101.3. No offense, 101.3. And then in America, we use 14.7 PSI. You've seen that on your car tires, your bike tires before. But we're not going to use that in this class. There's all kinds of other ways to measure. Okay, there's weather, and they measure things in bar. But the bottom line is that these are all equal to each other. These are all standard conditions, and you need to memorize these values. I cannot emphasize that enough. You need to know them by heart, and the fact that they are all equal to each other. Okay, so if I say 760 Tor, you say one atmosphere. If I say one atmosphere, you say one and 1.3 kPa. So pause this if you need to and write them down. Volume. Well, what is volume? The amount of space something takes up. So we measure, we're measuring a gas, right, in a balloon. Oh, right, measuring a gas in a balloon or in a tank, or in a container, a truck, um, in your lungs. So we're measuring things in liters or in milliliters or in cubic centimeters. Every once in a while you'll see something with a decimeter cubed. Okay, that's a different way to measure. And there's solids, like I can have a can like a can of beans that doesn't have beans in it, it's completely sealed, okay, or a tank or truck. That truck is completely sealed and it's empty, but it's full of air, so it's not really empty, is it? So I can measure things using just liters, all right? I can use some different equations where I can use the radius, pi r squared, all this stuff, times height per cylinder. Or if I have a box, like a cube, I do length times width times height. Or I can simply fill it up. I can fill this up and measure it. Or I can fill this up and measure it. 
I'm going to measure that in liters, milliliters, or cubic centimeters. Those measure volume. Temperature. Used to different temperature scales. You've heard of Celsius. We use that in science, and we also use it in Europe and the rest of the world. In America, we use Fahrenheit. And in science, we use Kelvin. Okay? And I'll talk about that at a different time, but that's because it goes down very low. Uh, and the other reason, really, when you're doing math, if you use zero in a math equation and you divide by it, it's an undefined uh, value, so you can't do that. So we need to convert. We need to convert from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, and to do that, you add 273. Okay, and if you remember, we were talking back here about standard values for pressure. Those are the standard values. Memorize them. Know that these measure volume. And the standard temperature, okay, can you imagine you and I are scientists and we're working in different labs and I say, hey, dude, like, so what do you want me to turn the lab to? I say standard conditions. That's 273. Excuse me, not standard conditions, but that's standard temperature. All right? So you need to memorize that, that 273 plus Celsius equals Kelvin. You notice there's no degrees on a Kelvin scale, it's just a scale. Again, a comparison of the different uh, temperatures you can see. Kind of interesting, actually, there's boiling point of water. They vary. So this is Kelvin, 373.15. 100 degrees is what the Celsius scale is, and at Fahrenheit, it's 212. Human body temperature. So if you want to pause this, you can look at it. That was a nice chart. So how, how is uh, pressure even figured out? So this guy named Torricelli, he's an Italian scientist. He takes this tube, so this tube right here, and he fills it completely full of mercury. So before he inverted it, it's full of mercury all the way. Then he flips it, like this, and puts it into a container, covering it up and with his finger so nothing leaks out, no air goes in or out. He puts it in this container, and every single time it drops to 760 millimeters. So at sea level, he always puts his eyeball next to it, and he looks, and he says, dude, oops. Look at this. I'm looking with my eye, and I look and see, and always it's at 760. So why isn't all the mercury going out and spilling over the edge? Well, something has to be pushing on it. So gas laws, there's no sucking. You suck through a straw, you don't do that. You overcome a force. So you can't say things suck anymore. There's a push or a pull. Okay. So really we're talking about pushing. So what's pushing on this bar barometer to make it so that the, the mercury doesn't fall out? Well, that air hat. Remember that air hat, right? This was the outer space. Here's your atmosphere. And here's space. And here was me. I'm standing on the earth. And what did I have on my head? I had an air hat. That air hat is the pressure that's pushing down on this at sea level. There's something else called a manometer. I'll come back into that in another uh, video. And if you notice, this is for a gas that's in a closed container. And this part can be open or closed. This happens to be open. It's open to the atmosphere. If you notice, there's a push. There's a push from the atmosphere. And the gas is also pushing. And what do you notice? The gas is pushing harder. How do you know? Because these levels are not equal. This level is higher, which means this side's pushing harder. Okay, we'll come back and do some of those problems. But a barometer measures atmospheric pressure. Now we have a tool to measure atmospheric pressure. And what do you remember about that? 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to one atmosphere. And in, it in Italy they call it Tor, because it's Torricelli. Those are all equal. And was it about a radio station? 101.3 kPa. Okay. And we'll worry about manometers later. So I'll come back to this. So there you go. There's barometric pressure. And now we don't use mercury anymore because of the danger, the fumes and stuff. So now we have um, this is a way to measure uh, barometric pressure. And you're at the barometer rising and falling in weather. Now we also have digital. Okay, another manometer. So I'll come back to that. Right, ways to measure atmospheric pressure. Kind of interesting. Okay, so there are some different laws that you have to know. 
you have to memorize them. The ideal gas law, and that really is the big daddy. There really is only one gas law. But I'm going to teach you a couple different ones, all right? But the ideal gas law is PV equals NRT, pressure, volume, number of moles, R, I'll tell you what R is in a minute, and T. Pressure, volume, number of moles, R, and temperature. R is a universal, a universal gas law constant. You know what pi is. You don't really know what pi is, though. But if I say pi, you say 3.14 and the whole rest of the number. Okay, so somebody with a circle, you know. I don't really know if you really know what that really means, but you have it memorized. So, most of the time this will be given to you, but the universal gas law constant is 0 0.08206. If you notice, if I take that 6 and round it, isn't that what you get? Okay? So that is the universal gas law constant. And that universal gas law constant, so these are really the same number, aren't they? Okay? It depends on what your teacher or the book or whatever. So this is what it is. This is a crazy label. It is a label. It is not an equation. I'll show you why. If I take the ideal gas law equation and solve. I'm going to solve for R. To do that, you take PV equals NRT, and how do you get R by itself? You need to divide both sides by N and T, don't you? And what happens? The N's cancel, the T's cancel, and you're left with R. So I want you to look and look at this label. And this label is based on how many variables? What is R based on? It's based on a pressure, a volume, number of moles, and temperature. So look at this. Here's a pressure, atmospheres. Here's a volume, liters. Here's number of moles, and there's a temperature. So do you see how R has four variables? Right? If I measure your height, I measure your height in inches or feet. One variable. If you're driving in a car and a policeman stops you, you're in miles per hour. Right? That's two variables. So how many variables does this depend on? Four. So repeat after me. This is a crazy label. Not an equation. What's the equation? PV equals NRT. Park, view, not our team. Park, view, not our team. Okay? So I want you to take a peek at this. And what I saw for I saw for R, didn't I? So look at this. This right here is a combined gas law. It's combining a bunch of different gas laws. And if you notice, I'm going to put ones here and twos here. And again, I'll explain why later in the next uh, video podcast. All right, we'll do actually do math then. But the combined gas law, as you can see, actually can be derived from the ideal gas law. And to be honest, most teachers, most, bo most books at a Chem 1 level, don't include this N. They might not include it. So you might see PV over T equals PV over T. The idea is you have a balloon. It has a certain temperature, pressure, and volume. And if I push on it or I change the temperature, the conditions can't change, and I can figure out what changes and how. So ideal gas law, combined gas law. And depending on what your teacher tells you to do, okay? But I'm going to tell you that I want you to memorize P1V1 over N1T1 equals P2V2 over N2T2. And if you ever forget, look at that. All you do is solve for R. How about that? All right, so let's go to the next slide here. Because there's a couple scientists. There's some ones other than there besides this, and we'll go into the next podcast. But that combined gas law, right? There's pressure, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 volume, moles, and temperature. So these are the guys. And usually teachers teach these separately. Well, what's the word combined mean? You combine a bunch of different gas laws. So these four people have four different laws. Boyle has his law. He is the relationship between volume and pressure. 
Charles has this law, his relationship between temperature and volume. Gay-Lussac is a Frenchman. He drives a Petit Cruiser. And so he's pressure and temperature. And Avogadro, remember him? He was Mole Man. He drives us, see the V? He drives a van. And so what's that mean? What, what's this little game here? This game tells you that if I have Boyle's Law, it's the relationship between volume and pressure. I'm never going to ask you, and most people aren't going to ask you and say, hey, whose law is this? Is it Boyle? Is it Gay-Lussac? They want to know, I want to know, do you know the relationship? So here's my game. Boyle is like a vice president. He's a politician. He tells you one thing and does the exact opposite. So what's that tell you about Boyle's law? That tells you it's an inverse relationship. And you know that for a fact. If an elephant stepped on your chest, the pressure would go up on your chest and the volume would go down. What would happen if the elephant backed off and didn't step on your chest? The pressure would go down and the volume goes up. And you know that. You've played with a balloon before. If I push in on that balloon, what happens? The pressure increases. And what happens? Doesn't it get smaller? To the point you're like, oh, no, press on it, it's going to pop. Right? So pressure goes up, volume goes down. What happens if you release that pressure? Doesn't it go back to what it was before? Whoops. Right? So the pressure goes back down and the volume goes back up. So how do you remember that? Boyle's the vice president. He's a politician. I don't believe that of all politicians, but sometimes that happens. So this is called inverse or indirect. One thing changes, the exact opposite happens. So what is true about the other people? They're all direct. So, what's this case here? This case is that temperature and volume, one goes up, the other goes up, one goes down, the other goes down. Same with Gay-Lussac and Avogadro. And their graphs look like this, direct. So Charles, TV, what happens when you take a balloon outside on a cold day? It shrivels. Because inside that balloon, what happens? The pressure hasn't changed. You're still in the same atmospheres, one atmosphere over your head. But those molecules inside the balloon that are bonking around and making sure it's inflated, isn't that true? So there's molecules inside that are doing that. At the same time, there's molecules on the outside that are pushing on it as well. So the balloon looks like a balloon. It just looks like a balloon. When you go outside on that cold day, what happens on the inside? Those molecules do not hit the inside of that balloon as well, do they? And so they're hitting slower. And what happens as a result? The volume decreases. I change the temperature because I went outside, and the volume decreased as a result. If you go back in the building, the volume goes up because the temperature goes up. Same with pressure and temperature. Pressure goes up as temperature goes up. You know that. You don't put a can of beans in a fire. What would happen? The beans would boil. The, the gas would turn into steam. The steam would expand. It would overcome the container, and it would pop. Right? And that there are warning uh, labels on different uh, containers. Okay? Same with Avogadro. And that's a duh. How about that? You have a balloon that has a number of moles in it. What happens when you put more moles in it? Huh. The volume goes up. A three-year-old could tell you that. So what is true? All of these laws are direct. When one goes up, the other one goes up. And one goes down, the other goes down. Okay? They're direct. Now, what is Boyle's Law? Well, I'm going to come back to my PV over NT equals PV over NT. One, 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 two, 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 two. Because we said that was a combined law, right? So who's Boyle again? Oh, he's the vice president. Well, what's true? If I have a problem that says Boyle's Law, and it says three atmospheres of pressure and two liters of a gas, okay? I change the pressure 
I'm going to increase it. I'm going to increase the pressure to five atmospheres. What's the new volume? That's your problem. So you come over here and you say, huh, I wonder what I have here. What are my variables? I have a pressure and I have a volume and that's the first one of each I've run into. So now I read the rest of my word problem and I say, oh, I changed the pressure to five atmosphere. I'm increasing it. That's my second pressure. What's my new volume? Well, that's my second volume. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ignore this N and T. What's N? Moles. Does it say anything in this problem about adding or taking a gas away? Is there a leak in the balloon? Are you blowing air in? Nope. Are you changing the temperature? Are you heating it up or cooling it down? Nope. And so guess what your equation is? P1V1 equals P2V2. And all you do is you plug in and you say I've got three atmospheres times two liters equals five atmospheres times x. And what do you do? We well, solve for x. So you get six equals five x. Six divided by five equals x, right? Because don't you divide both sides by five? And when you do that, you follow what I'm doing? Okay, so when you do that, I'm going to take 6 divided by 5, and whatever that answer is, I'm going to label that in liters. Okay? Sorry, my microphone. My microphone just fell off. Sorry about that. Okay? So I think you can hear me still. Okay? So that's Boyle's Law. And the answer to that would be 1.2 liters. And let's see if Boyle's Law holds true. What did we say? The pressure is going up. I have three atmospheres here and I'm going up to five atmospheres. I'm actually increasing my pressure. So if that's true, what should happen to my volume if I increase my pressure? What was Boyle's Law? Volume and pressure. If I increase my pressure, my volume should go down. Well, what's my starting volume? Two liters. Did it go down? Yeah, it sure did. 1.2 liters. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to go through all these laws. But let's go back for a second and look. And let's look at these com the combined gas law. All right, we just did boil, didn't we? So I'm going to erase that here. I'm going to look at Charles. What's Charles's law? It's temperature and volume. So I'm going to take this PV over NT and I'm just going to look at temperature and volume. The relationship there is volume divided by temperature equals volume divided by temperature. That's the equation for Charles. And you can memorize it separately, but I like to memorize the combined gas law and then just cover it up. Why did I cross out pressure and moles? Is it mentioned here at all? No, it's not. Now what you have to remember is you have a temperature involved, so in Charles' Law equations, if you had like say 25 degrees Celsius involved, you would have to change it to Kelvin. You have to, always. So let's look at the next one. Let's look at Gay-Lussac. What's Gay-Lussac's relationship? He's the Frenchman, he drives the PT Cruiser. He's a direct dude also because he's not the vice president. And so what's true? If you come back to this combined gas law, you have pressure up here and temperature down here. And pressure up here and temperature down here. What do you have to do once you have temperature involved? If they give you 2 degrees Celsius, you have to change it to Kelvin. All right? Now, what's the equation? Oops, that was good, wasn't it? What was the equation for Avogadro? He drives a van, VN. So his relationship is between volume and number of moles. No pressure and no temperature. And again, guys, that doesn't mean it's not there. It just means it's not changing. So you have volume 1 over number of moles 1 equals volume 2 over number of moles 2.
Okay? So in the next podcast, I'm going to solve all different kinds of problems. I'm going to solve the combined gas law. I'm going to solve Boyle's law, Charles law, Gay-Lussac, and Avogadro first. Then I'll come back and do a, Boyle, a combined gas law. And then I'll come back and do a couple ideal gas law problems. I'll do every twist and turn so you feel comfortable. Good luck, and uh, look for the next podcast in a couple days.